Hello, people. I, I wanted to bring your attention to something. I was listening to this interview with David Martin and David Knight. And uh, for those of you who don't know, David Martin has a, a YouTube. I follow him on YouTube, Butterfly of the Week. I'll put the links down below in case you're interested. But in this article, I mean, in this interview, he talks about uh, the people who funded the event 201. And um, it's called Open Philanthropy Project. Now, over here, you look at the Open Philanthropy Project. Well, we have this Holden uh, Karnofsky. Hmm. And uh, this sounds, what is that, Russian? Uh, uh, I, I don't know, but uh, he's the chief executive officer of the Open Philanthropy Project and a co-founder and member of GiveWell. Uh, at Bridgewater, Konofsky met his future GiveWell co-founder, L. Ellie Hassenfield, in 2006, Konofsky and Hassenfield started a charity charity club where they and other Bridgewater employees pulled in money and investigated the best charities to donate money to. In mid-2007, with donations from their colleagues, Konofsky and Hassenfield formed a fund called the Clear Fund. They quit their jobs to work full-time on GiveWell, whose goal was to allocate the money in the Clear Fund to the best charities. In December 2007, uh, Karnofsky uh, was discovered posting a question about the organization to Metafilter using another individual's name and then posting on an, an answer on about GiveWell on his own, with his own name without disclosing his affiliation with GiveWell. The negative publicity led Karnofsky to resign from the role of the executive director, though he was later reinstated. The incident had negative repercussions for GiveWell's reputation. Hmm. Interesting. I'd, I'd never heard of this. Uh, GiveWell announced a close partnership with Good Ventures, a philanthropic foundation tasked with giving away Facebook co-founders Dustin Moskovitz's wealth. Okay. Now, under uh, Konofs uh, Konofsky's leadership, the annual money moved to GiveWell recommended charities increased from $1.6 million in 2010 to $110 million in 2015. So the Open uh, Philanthropy Project, Konofsky is the chief executive officer, and uh, Open Phil is an outgrowth of GiveWell Labs, a collaboration of GiveWell and Good Ventures for more speculative giving. Uh, Open Phil is tasked with giving away the bulk of Moskovitz's multi-billion dollar wealth. As of August 2019, OpenPhil has made around 650 grants over to 370 unique organizations. Now, this is Dustin uh, Moskovitz, who is an American internet entrepreneur who co-founded Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg. Interesting. 2008, he left Facebook to co-found Asana with Justin Rosenstein. In March 2011, Forbes reported Moskovitz to be the youngest self-made billionaire in history on the basis of his 2.34% share in Facebook. Now, what I find, uh, you know, these guys, uh, their focus areas are open philanthropy is selected focus areas primarily from the following four categories, U.S. policy, uh, in criminal justice reform, farm animal welfare, macroeconomic stabilization policy, immigration policy, and land use reform, global catastrophic risk, <clears throat> biosecurity and pandemic preparedness, and potential risks from advanced artificial intelligence, really. Scientific research, uh, focusing on human health and well being, scientific innovation, science supporting biosecurity and pandemic preparedness. Yeah, that's getting you a biochip, uploading you to the cloud. So it will have sensors that will sense when you come in contact with some virus or bioweapon. Transformative basic science, science policy and infrastructure and other scientific research areas. Global health and development. Yeah, but what are they developing? As of August 2019, Open Philanthropy has made around 650 grants. 
uh, to 370 unique organizations. Notable grantees include Deworm, the World Initiative, the Malaria Consortium. That's over $100 million in just the, those top two, $69.5 million for Deworm, the World Initiative, Malaria Consortium, $59.5 million. The Security for, uh, or Center for Security and Emerging Technology, uh, Yes, this emerging technology that will merge us with AI, give directly uh, against Malaria Foundation, open AI, this just a, just a semiasis control initiative, Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, Johns Hopkins, uh, who was involved itself in, in Event 201. In that interview, which I haven't finished listening to yet, he mentions uh, Sherlock Biosciences and their patents. Uh, and so they're somehow tied into this whole COVID thing. Uh, like I say, I'll put the link to the uh, interview below so you can listen to it. It's rather interesting. But uh, I, I just, uh, you know, who are these these people that are, are reshaping, you know, this goes so far beyond the event 201. I mean, I mean this was all laid out. This is uh, uh it, that that event went live and um, you know they're on a fast track the the great reset the new normal operation warp speed to get out this vaccine that's gonna connect everyone you know make us all safer uh, just less human so um let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm also going to put a link down below about an article that talks about how governments become more authoritarian uh, when there's parasite prevalence. Hmm. And they, uh, most, most people don't even realize that, that so many of us have multiple co-infections. We have multiple infections. Uh, our immune systems are shut off with all the bacteria, uh, and fungus and our, our immune system doesn't have the ability to see to fight off these infections they learned if you if you watch patrick you know uh, uh world health organization came out in the early 70s and they found they could load those mice down with infections uh, they shut the immune system off load them down with infections and they went around like nothing was wrong anyways thanks for taking